Hey guys, the new O3 air unit from DJI came out and we're gonna compare it against this O2 unit, the older FPV unit from DJI, so let's get to it. We received this air unit about a week ago and I've had a week to test it and so far my experience has been pretty stellar. Uh, one thing that I do wanna mention is that the air unit does get hot. It doesn't get hot like the older Air 2 unit, it gets hot actually a lot faster. So it has about a nine minute run time when you're on low power mode before it starts to overheat. And when you when you arm your motors, you wanna make sure that you have airflow over the top or this thing's gonna get really hot and shut down pretty quickly. So how do these two compare? Well, the O3 unit has a 48 megapixel camera. It has a one over 1.7 inch sensor. It does 10 kilometers of range and it shoots at 4K 60 or 155 degrees field of view. And the O2 specs has a four megapixel camera, one over 3.2 inch sensor, has four kilometers of range and shoots at 720, 120 frames a second at 150 degrees of field of view. Now, if you look at this drone right here, this is the drone that we had it installed on. Originally, we had the O2 air unit installed right here in the front. Now, because of the, the smaller field of view, we actually didn't get any of the standoffs in frame. We did have a little bit of props in view, but it wasn't too bad, especially if you run the gray props. Now, being a wider field of view, this camera, actually, when you mount it behind your standoffs, one thing that you'll have to know is that the standoffs actually sit inside of the field of view. So in order to get those standoffs out of view, you actually have to mount it uh, quite far in front of the standoffs, which in my opinion kind of exposes your your camera to a crash So if you're one of those guys that like to send it all the time then um, Then likely, you know You'll have to be wary of that because your camera is gonna be out in front of the standoffs in order to get that perfect quality image So with the introduction of this new O3 air unit DJI has made it pretty simple to either bind to your FPV goggles v2 or your new goggles 2 um, there's a benefit to having these goggles over the goggles too because of the 120 frames per second that you can record on your air unit with using these goggles here. Now, if you use the goggles too, you can only record at 100 frames per second. Again, both of that is in 2.7K resolution. Now, if you use the goggles too, you're at about 30 milliseconds of latency there. And if you use the FPV goggles here, you're at about 28 milliseconds of latency. Speaking of latency, um, I was flying this out in the parking lot behind our studio. And one thing that I noticed right off the bat is that the latency was super low and the pixelation was almost non-existent when you're up close. And the first thought that came to my mind was, man, you could actually race this. So for beginners, if you're looking to get into FPV, this is definitely something that you can practice with because the latency is so low. Now DJI has done a pretty good job packaging everything that a GoPro can offer, but in an FPV system. This O3 air unit here, uh, what I really like about this system is that it has Rocksteady. Just like the Avada right here, which has the same exact system inside, you can actually record everything that you need to record using Rocksteady. The IMU is inside the camera. So if your drone here is prone to vibrations, that's one thing that you're gonna have to deal with. Um, you're gonna have to figure out how to isolate your camera from those vibrations of the frame. I didn't have to mess with that too much. I just made some TPU mounts and threw the camera on there, threw Rocksteady on, recorded on the air unit, and, and I had pretty smooth footage. But if your drone is prone to vibrations, sometimes Rocksteady may not be able to get rid of all of that. And the O3 air unit also has decine like It also has 20 gigabytes of internal storage, as well as open IMU data, so that if you're one of those guys that like to post edit and stabilize your footage afterwards, you can use uh, software like Gyroflow to do that. Now, one major difference between these two air units here is that this has two antennas, but this has a single antenna. The single antenna is what you call a 2T2R omnidirectional antenna, which basically means uh, it has two antennas in here to establish two data streams. I've been talking with uh, Mr. Original Candono, and he was mentioning that the range is really good. Now, we haven't actually had time to go out and test the range, uh, but one thing he did mention is that he had a, uh, an FPV drone that actually had two separate antennas. And when he had that drone with two separate antennas, he was actually getting worse range than just having the single antenna. Another really cool feature about this is the ND filters. So if you already have an Avada or you need to buy uh, ND filters for your air unit, the Avada camera is 
well, it's exactly the same system. So if the ND filters fit on the Avada, they're gonna fit on your air unit. So like I said, we had this for a week and I went out and tested it. One thing I noticed right off the bat, as soon as I put on the goggles, I was like, wow, this is amazing. I can't believe it. Felt like I was watching a YouTube video, but I had the controller in my hand and I was controlling the video. I mean, I was pretty blown away at, at the 1080p resolution to my goggles. From a user experience, I would say I had a pretty good experience with this. This has been my tried and true system for a long time. Uh, it's, it's trusty, it always works. Uh, the OSD information is displayed all the time. I'm a little bit hesitant to switch to this entirely just yet because the OSD is not displayed inside the goggles. So, and I, I assume that that's gonna be fixed uh, here in the near future when DJI comes out with an update or the Betaflight devs also come out with a software fix for it. But as of now, the recording of this video, I couldn't quite get OSD information on the goggles. I did have battery voltage, but I didn't have things like RSSI and uh, some of the critical stuff that Betaflight has to offer that I look forward to when I fly FPV. So in the future, I hope to see either DJI or Betaflight devs come out with a software fix to get OSD information on the screen. Now you guys are all wondering what the price is. Uh, this O3 unit and this O2 unit, they're a little bit different in price. The O3 is 229. The O2 is just your standard 179, which is basically a $50 increase over the older air unit. Now the goggles two here, these are 649. Last time I checked, and now I think these have gone on sale for about 429. So if you have this system and you're looking to get a new air unit, you got to take into account a few things. One is that it's going to get hot. So you have to have airflow over it. Two is it has a wider field of view, so you have to come up with some sort of mounting solution like we did here on this drone to, in order to bring your camera outside the standoffs and hopefully not get your props in view. And the third thing is, which goggles do you wanna get? If you already have these goggles, um, they record at 120. So if you have the necessity to record at 120, I would just stick with these goggles unless you want the OLED screen in which case you'd be limited to 100 frames a second. All in all, I think DJI did a great job. They certainly released a product that's gonna set the benchmark for other companies to follow. And what I really like about this system, again, is the Rocksteady. So we're gonna roll some clips here, both with Rocksteady on and Rocksteady off. Let me know what you guys think on how well the vibrations got reduced. Leave your comments down below, and we'll see you guys in the next video.